This is a very complex sentence with a long underlined part. Fortunately, what's at stake here is just one of the simplest grammar rules, just about subject and verbs. So first of all, if we have a subordinate conjunction like although, we have two structures here in the sentence, although followed by a participle and although followed by a noun and a verb. Any conjunction like although has to have a bona fide noun and a verb after it. So although plus a particle, this is actually one of the most popular mistake forms on the GMAT. So it's actually very important to recognize this form because it appears often and it's never correct. For example, in A, we have although appearing. So we have although and then participle, not a noun and a verb. So A is out. In B, we have although heirloom tomatoes, and then a participle phrase, appear. So heirloom tomatoes appear, bona fide noun and verb. So that works. In C, we have although they appear, bona fide noun and verb. But then we have this other noun, heirloom tomatoes. And this is just hanging out in the middle of the sentence, this noun that doesn't have any verb attached to it. And it's particularly bizarre. Why would we use a pronoun as the subject of the sentence and then leave the noun just floating around in the middle of the sentence? So C has some problems, so we'll just nuke C. D is interesting. So D decides to get rid of the although word entirely. And what we have here is, so we have a participial phrase, grown, let's see, this is grown from seeds saved during the previous year. And it's a bit odd to have that as the beginning of the sentence because that's in no way one of the fundamental facts that we want to say in the sentence. That is just purely a detail. So it's strange to open the sentence with that, but we'll let that go. Then we have noun and verb, heirloom tomatoes appear. And the trouble is we have noun and verb and then the dash and then noun and verb again, heirlooms are. And so we have an overall structure of the sentence, noun, verb, noun, verb, with no conjunction. This is something known as a run-on sentence. A run-on sentence does not necessarily have to be a long sentence. A run-on sentence puts together two independent clauses without a conjunction. It could be cats meow, dogs bark. Those four words together make a run-on sentence because cats meow, that's an independent clause, dogs bark, that's an independent clause. So when we put two independent clauses together without any conjunction, we have a run-on sentence. That's exactly what D is. So D is out. And then in E, what we have is we have heirloom tomatoes, a noun, and then a modifier, grown from, so that modifies it. And then although followed by its own noun and verb, but the, the noun heirloom tomatoes is left without a verb. So we have a subject without a verb floating around in the sentence. So this is grammatically incorrect also. And so when we eliminate all these problems, the only one that is left is answer choice B, which has the correct grammar, which states everything clearly. It is by far the best answer choice.